Here we go. Uh, we're going to model a car, and uh, we're going to do it kind of the way that it's actually built, so that it looks really good in your renders. It's going to take a little longer to do it this way, but the results are going to be more than worth it. So uh, I'm going to use a blend of poly tools today and uh, NURBS tools, and I'm going to kind of help you guys bridge the gap between polygons and NURBS, uh, hopefully for good with this uh, assignment. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, reference material is incredibly important. Definitely want to have a ton of reference if you're going to be modeling a vehicle from all different angles. The first thing I want to show you is kind of how to line up your reference in Photoshop in order to make your life easier once you get into Maya. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, Adobe Photoshop. Okay. I just want to check my volume. That's good. No, this one, uh, it's going to be a long video because it's going to pretty much be the entire lecture. Uh, so I think I'm just going to throw it in the calm so you guys can go and grab it. So here we go. Let's go to Adobe Photoshop. And we want to, you want to grab the most side, front and back images that you can find for your, your, uh, your car. So that's a really good front image. That kind of doesn't get any better than that. And then I'm just going to scroll up. Oh, uh, you know what? You guys want to grab the, these files <coughs> and try to follow along. Let me pause this. And, all right, so reference images. Uh, you want uh, a side, a front, and a back. So I've grabbed the back there. I've got a nice side. And I'm just looking for a front view. Got it. I'm going to drag those into Photoshop. And I'm going to create a new image. So I want it to be pixels for the size. And I kind of like 2048 by 2048. Depending on your graphics card, you may have to go 1024 by 1024. Uh, but for my system at home, this works well. So I'm going to do, I always make the image square. And this becomes important in a minute. Um, it just uh, makes your life easier. So then I just go and I copy each of the images. And I just paste them into my uh, image that I just made. Okay. And there's the back. So I'm going to grab that. OK. And then the first thing you want to do in here is I've got my three layers. i got my back, my front, and my side. I kind of am just going to scale these all to, to, to match each other. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to go ahead and paint a, a, a regular old uh, horizontal line in here, just using like a gray and a paintbrush. And uh, I'm going to create a new layer above everything. And I just want to draw a line just like that all the way across the, the frame. And what I'm going to do with that line is I'm going to use it to basically orient my images so that they all line up with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, car layer here. I think I'm going to leave that as my baseline. And so I just want to move my line here to see if it lines up, and it does, that's actually perfect. I don't think we're going to do any better than that. And then I might check the roof line. So what I might do here is just do a duplicate of this curve and drop it at kind of three crucial places on the vehicle. So like um, 
the top of the quarter panel, the top of the roof, and then the bottom of the body, right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select my other layer, and I'm going to do Control T for scale and manipulate. And what I want to do is I want to line this image up to be to have the same features as the one that I'm using as my guide. So that's the roof line right there. Uh, that is the top of the body and that's the bottom of the car. This one uh, doesn't line up completely. There's reasons for this. Uh, cameras introduce uh, perspective and parallax and distortion. And so what you sometimes have to do is just cheat, which I'm going to do. And I'm going to move my center up to the roof line here. And I'm just going to scale this down to basically match, even though. Um, and now I've got my, my quarter panel matching, my roof, and the bottom of the body. And we're just going to, you know, not worry about the fact that I just distorted that image. It's immaterial. It was distorted anyway. So uh, that one's lined up. Now we just have to do the front. So I'm going to hit Control T again to manipulate this guy, transform and move. And I want the roof to line up with the body and the bottom. And it, just bear in mind, you're never going to get these perfect, OK? Uh, what we're doing here is just kind of making our lives easier um, to begin with. Uh, and just be aware, though, that it's never going to line up even after we do this. OK, so now that we have that, all we have to do is save each layer. So I'm going to con uh, Control Shift Save to save a copy. I'm going to do a JPEG. I'm going to save it to my desktop in a folder called Temp Car Tutorial and uh, Bronco Body Side Ref. I'm going to replace it. Camera. Um, okay, and uh, then I'm going to do the rear or back. Control Shift uh, Save. Control Shift S for save. And the back, we'll save over that one. And then I'm going to do the front. Control Shift S for save a copy. And I'm just going to do a JPEG again. And then body front, there we go. I'm going to save it. Looks good. Okay, our reference images are created. And now I can go ahead and launch uh, Autodesk Maya. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and start creating a bunch of uh, polygon planes. So I'm going to start in the side view. And I'm going to create a polygon primitive plane. And I'm going to hold down the shift key to make this thing completely square. Can you guys think of a reason I might be doing that? Absolutely. Yeah, and I don't have to mess with UVs or, or uh, distortion or anything. How do you know if it's the same? Oh, it doesn't matter whatever you take. Yeah, I'm kind of on this one. Uh, if you wanted to be absolutely correct, you'd set your scale up in your scene to be the scale of the car. And I encourage you to do that. For this demo, I'm just not going to do it to save time because you guys have already seen that so concept. Scale. So, uh, would your scales be, you said pixels? Is what you did? Uh, so for the you image, did. I saved it as 2048 by 2048 pixels. Yeah. Okay, so the same thing on this. So now I have my plane created. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say assign new material. And I'm going to assign a Lambert because that one doesn't have any um, sort of specularity to it. And then I'm going to put a color. I'm going to click the checker box to assign a texture map. And I'm going to go and hunt for my um, my side image. So Bronco body side ref. That's the one I want. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And if I hit the six key, I can see it applied right here on my image. Looks good. 
and I can turn the grid off if I wanted to, but I first want to place this thing. So I'm just going to hit the W key, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my vehicle so that the tires basically are on the uh, ground plane. So, and then I believe my uh, scale right now is centimeters, and so I definitely want to make this thing a little bit bigger. Maybe not that big. Okay. And put it at the ground plane. And then all I have to do once I've made this is I want to give it a unique name. So I want to call it side ref plane. Oops, no. So side ref plane is what I want to call it. And then I'm also going to create a layer called side ref plane underscore L. So there's no conflicts with it. Okay, and then once I have that, I can hit Control D to duplicate it. And all I have to do is rotate it 90 degrees. And now I can uh, assign a different texture map to this. And uh, just, I'm just going to select the plane and I'm going to say assign new material. And a Lambert again so I don't have to mess with specularity. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and assign a map by clicking on the checker there to assign a texture map. And then I'm going to navigate to my um, front. So Bronco body ref front. And look at this. This is a thing of beauty. My images already line up with each other. So I don't have to do any finagling with my planes whatsoever because I've already done the work in Photoshop. So that's just kind of nice. If you've ever modeled from reference in Maya and you're constantly moving your planes around, uh, it just sucks. So don't do it. Do it in Photoshop first. Okay, so I'm going to call this one front ref plane. And I'm going to create a layer for that also. And these are great because you can just sit here and hide and unhide these, move them around as you want. And these are just 10 times more flexible than using the image planes in Maya. That's why I use them. So you, you brought those in like you do an image plane? No, I just created a polygon plane. And then it behaves the same way as an image plane. It just allows me to manipulate it and throw it around, scale it, just like an object, instead of having to go through the cumbersome interface for working with image plane. All right, so I have my uh, my rear ref plane or my back ref plane. So I'm going to go ahead and name that. Yeah, it is right now because I haven't assigned a new one. So I'm going to copy that name, and then I'm going to create another layer. Setting up the scene is kind of half the battle, I think. Okay, so I have all my planes created and named with layers so I can hide or unhide them. And now all I have to do is swap out this material. So I'm going to say assign new material. Uh, I'm going to use a Lambert again. File. Uh, and then I want uh, Bronco body back. And then same thing here, if I go ahead and move this thing into place, you can see here that it coincides perfectly with my uh, side ref. Uh, not perfectly, there's always a little discrepancy, but that's impossible to, uh, to get around. Okay, so we've got it all blocked out. Uh, the beauty of the layers now is that I can just hide the ones I'm not using. So I want the front and back hidden, and I want the side. Do you want like the front in a particular position? Uh, no, just uh, right now I have it at the origin, which is fine. So I might just cinch it up to the origin by turning on the grid snap and cinch it up, and that's about all I need to do. So now what I can do is I can go into the side view. Let's just do one thing. Let's confirm that our uh, our orthographic viewports line up with our our uh, reference images because I have seen my uh, 
freak out and uh, the cameras are named incorrectly. Uh, it's kind of a weird thing, but I've seen it a couple times now. All right, so front, side, it's all corresponding. We look good. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's start uh, breaking this model down for modeling. And I probably can turn my grid off now. The way I like to start on any car that I'm modeling is I take the most complicated quarter panel, and that's what I start with. Um, and what that also the most complicated quarter panel usually defines the arcs for the model itself. And so once you've done that one, you'll find that the rest of the uh, the rest of the quarter panels and elements kind of just come together a lot easier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and start with a section of this quarter panel, which I think kind of defines the shape. All right, and what I see here is this little edge here where the model starts and so I'm just gonna go ahead and I wanna create a new shelf because I'm gonna have a bunch of commands that I'm gonna keep using today so tools tools and one of the tools I'm gonna to use a lot today <coughs> is a CV curve CV curve and so I'm going to go ahead and say create CV curve. I'm going to hold down control and shift to add that button. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw. Notice that I'm not going to draw on this line itself. And the reason for that is because this line is the void between two quarter panels that then have fillet curves. And so what I want to do is I want to draw my line where the quarter panel is and before the fillet curve begins. So I, that'll be, make a little bit more sense later, but if you don't get it, just nod and you'll see. So I want to go ahead and drop this line, and I'm going to leave enough uh, control verts for it for me to shape it into the shape that I believe uh, my door needs. So I just drew that a CV curve, linear degree, uh, so it's kind of like a polyline, and I gave it uh, four CVs. Okay, so now that that's done, I can go ahead and move this line kind of off the, the side panel. And now what I want to do is I just want to take a peek at my front panel. And I'm going to move it out of the way so I can see my curve. And I'm just going to try to kind of place my curve where I think it might be. So it's maybe somewhere in here. Okay. Probably not. Actually, it follows this line. See that right there? That's where the side panel begins. And so that's what <coughs> I'm going to line it up with is that element right there. And then I can also look at it in the back plane and see. So in the back plane, it's a little bit, uh, still not a whole lot of new information, but just based on where the roof line is. Uh, to where it meets the body, I'd say that's a safe guesstimate as to where that is. Okay, so now I have this thing placed correctly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into <coughs> the front view. And I'm going to give this thing some shape because I know that that portion of the car bends under. So and it goes under and it kind of hits the frame. And if you don't believe me, I can show you. Some people think it's a running board. It's not it's kind of like a hard frame right there so that piece just f curls right under and then hits what looks like it's actually part of the frame if it's not it should be so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the front view and now I'm just simply going to go in and add that curve and since I don't really have any real information as to what the curve is I can kind of make it up so it is a fairly extreme um, curl it goes back a little bit farther than you think so why don't we just use we'll use this bumper kind of as a as a guide that's pretty good since the bumper also uh, gets drawn off that line okay so I got my little curve there now I can go into the side view again and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get started on this model by uh, uh, just for giggles, I always like to center the pivot, even if it's not necessary. 
I probably just got into the habit of doing that. So I'm going to say modify, center pivot. I'm going to hold down the shift and control keys to create a key for that. So I'm going to center the pivot on this guy. And then I'm going to go into surfaces and I'm going to uh, extrude it. But this time not on a path. I'm just going to extrude it at a distance. So I'm going to say distance, uh, direction, specify. And I want it to be uh, Z. And surface degree, that doesn't really matter because I'm going to output this thing as a polygon. And I'm going to use control points as the settings. And what that's going to do is it's just going to extrude that um, as a polygon uh, surface. And it's going to maintain the exact same number of vertices and edges as the CV curve had. And so now I'm just going to extrude this thing along as far as that goes on the running board until we kind of have a break here at a shape, right? So the other thing I want to do is see how these uh, vertices are kind of uh, wonky. They're not uh, completely um, straight up and down. I want to go ahead and fix that. And I'm going to do it by scaling it. And I'm going to look at these numbers down here as I'm doing it. And what I want to do is I want to hit them all to 1, 1, and 1, or 1, 1, and 0, or as close as possible to that. You can also just eyeball it, too. When that line goes straight like that, that, that means they're, they're uh, pretty straight. And there we go. And if you zoom in, you, I don't know. For this demo, you can get these things as straight as you want. For this demo, I'm just going to say that's straight. All right, so now that I have that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and select the edges. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude that. So polygons, edit mesh, extrude. And I want to, for this curve here, I know that I just want three vertices to define that curve. So I have a... A couple of options as to how I could do this. I could pull these points up to go ahead and, and uh, match that edge. The problem with that though is that I'm going to lose my shape here and my, uh, my quarter panel is going to kind of uh, distort a little bit and I'm not sure if I want to do that. Okay. Although that looked decent. Let's go ahead and try it one more time and see if it holds up. So I'm going to select these edges again, and I'm going to say Edit Mesh Extrude. I want to extrude it in World. And I'm going to go to Vertex Mode, and I just want to change this one a little bit. I kind of missed that arc right there, and that looks pretty good. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of <clears throat> loosely following the arc that the door cutout makes for that object. So I have that. Let's look at, you know, that uh, that actually held up. So I'm going to go ahead and run with it. It's more simple than the way I did it before. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and select these edges again. And what do you think I'm going to do? Extrude them. I'm going to use world coordinates to extrude. And again, I'm not going to the extent of the quarter panel. I'm kind of leaving a uh, space there so that I can do the fillet later. Oops. And then now I'm just going to pull my verts to get the shape of the bumper here. So I'm simultaneously, now I've gone from just one plane uh, to two planes for, for three-dimensional position of this uh, quarter panel here. So the other thing I may want to do is select these vertices and make sure that they're planar. So I'm going to grab them both and scale them down. They are good. So then I'm going to select the uh, poly again, and I'm going to go to edge, and I'm going to extrude it again. World mode. And then I have another shape over here that kind of does the same thing as this one. 
So I'm simplifying things a bit. If I were doing this for real, I might uh, add some more edges to this, but um, eh, you know, this is enough uh, enough edges to get that shape. So there we go. And then I'm going to extrude it again, world mode. At this point, I want to turn on wireframe on shaded so that I can see my uh, edges all the time. And I'm going to go to vertex mode. And then I'm going to go to edge again, extrude. Vertex, oops. Okay, edge again, extrude it, and this time we have a feature here, so I want to stop right there at that feature, and then let's go ahead and extrude it one more time to match the next feature, and now uh, we actually have to do a little shaping here because for this next feature on the quarter panel uh, I know from looking at the front and back view that this thing bevels and I can confirm that also by looking at this extreme shot I have of an overhead of a trade show and we can see here that this thing now bevels in right? so now we want to go ahead and add that bevel and we're going to go ahead and do that in the front view so I'm going to use the, um, the front as my ref plane and here we can see that I actually made a mistake and that I was off in my placement of my uh, quarter panel to begin with so that's really not a big deal because all I'm going to do is center the pivot and I'm going to move it notice how it was breaking apart when you're working with NURBS curves you constantly have to delete the history so I'm going to say modify uh, edit delete by type his, history and I'm going to hold down the shift and control key to make a button for that and I'm going to delete the history on that face and I'm going to move it out here to match up with my uh, quarter panel and you can't see my line uh, between this thing and all I have to do is move my plane back so that I can so there we go and now I can see that and all I have to do is select those vertices and go ahead and bend them in. So that's pretty much it. You, you can uh, get out of control if you try to marry these things perfectly. So like if I go ahead and do this, you kind of want to like stick to one view and use it because if you uh, use the front view and then you go to the back plane and it doesn't match up, you'll constantly be uh, moving your point from one plane to the other. So if you're going to align it to one plane, just kind of stick with it and go with it because when these cars are shot, they're shot with a, a lens which has perspective and so you have distortion inherent in the images themselves. So just stick with one and go with it. I'm going to use the front. Okay. And that looks pretty good. And now we can go ahead and just take a look at our panel in the 3D view and it doesn't look like much yet uh, but it's starting to get somewhere so now I'm gonna go ahead and unhide my side plane again and I do want to use the side plane so I'm gonna match that this is probably my most predominant plane so I just pulled those verts up to coincide and I'm gonna select these edges right here I say edit mesh extrude world mode so that I don't get any unintended uh, distortion here and then I'm going to do the same treatment uh, that I had on the other one whoops 
So I'm going to hit the G key to extrude that again. And this time I'm going to go to about uh, here. And then I'm going to select this edge. And I'm going to extrude it down. This one I kind of want to line up with this one. So I have a poor man's technique for that. I just scale up the manipulator tool until I get it to line up with the other one. And then I scale it down. I know that's not perfect, but uh, it's close enough. Okay, and I'm going to pull this vert because it looks like there's kind of like a little bevel there, compound bevel at that edge. So I just pulled that in. I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to extrude it again. I'm going to go to world mode. And I, same thing, I kind of want this one to coincide with this one, if nothing else, just for simplicity and consistency. So that lines up pretty well. Oops. Vertex. And I just want to move this over to give me that shape for the bumper. And then I'm going to select this edge, extrude it, world mode from manipulation. I'm going to move it down and then notice this little line here. What that is, is that's kind of a break and a change in the shape. As this quarter panel starts to round the corner, um, it starts to break and change shape. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into vertex mode. I'm going to line this thing up with the bumper, but I'm going to move it down here to coincide with that kind of natural break here. And then um, there we go. So we have the quarter panel and now we're about ready to make a turn. So let's get some information about what that turn might look like. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the overhead view. And I um, kind of can see it here. It looks like it's just basically like a kind of almost like a 45, uh, like a bold nose almost. So that's all I have to do. So I'm going to go ahead and select these edges now, and I'm going to extrude them. Oops. Okay, and then now might be a good time to go ahead and uh, add a little shaping also. So I really already kind of know what this thing does it just starts turning a corner so I can do that and again if uh, I might do two edges here but for simplicity's sake for the demo uh, I'm just gonna do one to turn this corner and then I'm gonna go ahead and extrude one more time world mode and turn the corner Okay. Then I want to look at my back plane to see how I'm lining up. And all I have to do is grab this plane. And move it out of the way so that I can see that quarter panel. So we turn a corner here, and uh, it looks like we have another arc on the rear of the bumper, which we don't want to minimize. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this back. I'm going to pull this vertice. Go into wireframe just to make sure I wasn't pulling multiple verts. And I might just cheat this one here. 
Well, because I could always go into the uh, the split polygon tool and go ahead and add another vertex there and uh, get the edge that I want. And so why don't I go ahead and do that? Interactive split tool. Click. Added a vert there, so I want to grab that vert. And I just want to create that arc for that rear section of the uh, car. And then I can go ahead and select this edge, and I'm going to extrude that one more time. And I, this is, I want to be uh, relative, not flat, but uh, I definitely want these to line up with that fillet curve right there. And that curve there. Okay, so now uh, we're ready to go ahead and do the compound arc for around the back of the vehicle. So now I want to go ahead and select these edges right here. And I could actually rotate these. Oops. I'll do that with the vertices instead. Actually, no, I don't want to. I need to extrude them first. So I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, Extrude. And I'm getting some weird, I thought I was in world mode, but I wasn't. There we go. So I want to be in world mode, and I just want to move that over. And what I'm doing is I'm following the contour of the back section, same as I did at the top. And I can just go ahead and... Grab these verts. And why don't I use two sections here? And I'm going to say edit mesh extrude. And I'm going to do it in world mode again. Okay, so I'm starting to turn that corner. I've got the shape of the of the vehicle. I'm going to rotate these guys up. And I'm going to extrude them again. World mode. And one more extrude. World mode again. And this time I'm going to scale them to straighten them out. And 
And I'm going to go ahead and add them because that's the break. Now we're into another panel where the uh, whatever that it thing is, some sort of a uh, running board. Okay. Okay. So now we've turned the corner. We got a quarter panel here. And our car is actually starting to look a little bit more like a car. So at this point, we could also um, go ahead and grab these edges here, here, and here, and extrude those. So I'm going to say Edit Mesh, Extrude. I want to go into World Mode to do it. And I'm going to move them up to be uh, parallel with that edge. And now I want to select the verts because I want to flatten these guys out. So I'm going to select them. Uh, I didn't want this vertice. Whoops. So I'm going to deselect that. I wanted these vertices here, and I'm going to. I want to flatten them. And then I want to move them into place. And I'm going to select these edges. World mode. I'm going to line it up with that set of verts. And then G again, world mode. And I'm going to line it up with that set of verts. Okay. And now all I have to do is go into vertex mode. And I'm just going to blanket it just in case I have any verts that were uh, unwelded. And I'm going to say window. Or uh, mesh, sorry, edit mesh merge. There we go. We got uh, one of the quarter panels finished. I got kind of a stray vert here that I'm not really liking. And when I did my extrude, it's because I need to do some more shaping over here. So I'm just going to grab this. And I'm going to line these verts up with the fender. And then I'm going to check my work and make sure that everything's copacetic. That looks pretty good. Okay. We're ready to keep going. Now, when, I, when I'm modeling uh, with polygons like this, uh, as you start pulling points and stuff, your normals can kind of get a little hacked up, and your, some of your faces can be shaded and some aren't, and it's just kind of annoying at times. So what uh, I often like to do is go into normals and harden edge, and basically it just makes all the edges hard so that uh, you don't have any surface properties. kind of helps you to see if things are kind of going awry or not. Um, so that's just a good one to do. Okay, so now we have the quarter panel uh, for the side of the car. Uh, let's go ahead and continue this forward. And let's go ahead and model the door. So the way I want to do that is what? I really don't know. No, I know. Okay, so I want to select this quarter panel and I'm going to select the edges and I'm just going to go out here and I'm going to select these edges on down and I'm just going to go ahead and extrude those so I'm going to say edit mesh extrude I want to do it in world mode And I think I'm going to go ahead and line this up with my door. I'm going to go into x-ray mode. And I'm just going to pull these vertices. To line up with the gaps in my door. Okay. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and grab those edges again. And I'm going to extrude them again. Move them in world mode. And I just want to move them forward. This door is completely flat. So I'm just going to move my top edge to coincide with uh, the extent of the door. And I'm going to select all my vertices. And I'm going to flatten those guys out by scaling them. Um, that could be perspective or that could actually be a feature so I'm going to call it a feature and just scale that one back a little bit alright now that I have the door duplicated like that I don't need these faces anymore so I'm going to go ahead and separate this thing the door to be an, its actual own object first by deleting the gap and then by selecting the faces and saying edit mesh duplicate face I want to make sure separate duplicated faces is selected and apply okay now all I have to do is select this quarter panel go into oops, face mode and delete those faces and now I have a quarter panel with a separate door awesome okay at this point I probably want to go ahead and save this thing so remember guys incremental saves I get a text every week from someone who uh, loses their file and wants to know how to get it back and the answer is you can't uh, you have to do incremental saves so let's go ahead and save this file. Uh, see all these saves? That was just this morning. So I'm going to save it again. Okay, we're ready to start going forward. Uh, we already have the profile, right? So all we need to do is just keep reusing uh, these curves. So let's go ahead and I'm going to duplicate the door or extrude the door edge mode oh how did I do that somehow I got these uh, two guys uh, not connected so what I want to do is I'm going to select the door and then this panel up here and I want to combine them vertex edit mesh merge to make it one okay now I can go to edge mode And I really don't need that one down there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say edit mesh, extrude. World mode again. And I want to just straddle the other side of that uh, fillet there. So then I'm going to extrude it one more time. I'm going to move it in world mode. And I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Okay. Can delete these faces because I don't need them anymore.
And then I need to, I'm going to borrow these uh, edges right here because I want this to all be consistent. Select these edges, edit mesh, extrude. You guys falling asleep on me. Is everyone getting it? Yeah. Okay. It seems tedious, but it's really controlled and it produces a really good car. So. Yeah, then you'd compensate that for it. I'm doing this one. It's boxy because we don't have time to do, to do a compound car in, in lecture. And I tried to do it the other way without. Although I'd be happy to show you, like if you come up with one that you're having trouble with, I'll be happy to solve it for you. Okay, so I'm going to move that one forward. Uh, same thing. I'm just going to maintain that edge. I'm going to hit G again. And now I'm done. Well, what I'm doing is because I started with one quarter panel, um, I'm just rather than redrawing all these curves and ending up with kind of different profiles or whatnot, I could also, I could have easily also done this just by snapping a uh, CV curve degree linear to this curve and just extruded that over also. So it would have worked the same. But all I was trying to do was I'm just using these edges because they're identical shape. And if I extrude and move over in world mode, I know that I'm not changing that shape at all. So I'm moving it over and I'm moving it over twice so that I can delete the edges in between and duplicate it. And it's just a meticulous method so that I make sure that I don't end up with a, a discrepancy between the two surfaces. Because if you do uh, end up with that sometimes, not always it shows, but sometimes it does. And it's like, oh, you know, oh, that doesn't look right, and it's because the person wasn't meticulous in maintaining the arc across the entire vehicle. Does that make sense? Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to select these faces and I'm going to say Edit Mesh. Uh, duplicate faces. Where is it? It's Mesh, isn't it? I always get these mixed up. There it is. I wish they had one that was like duplicate face um, and delete the the underlying face, but they don't. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Face. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's definitely not the easiest way to do this, uh, but it does maintain um, your arc from, from segment to segment, which... Uh, when you duplicate faces, you get it from the side panel? Yeah, because I already extruded. The, right. the shape is identical. If I looked at this in the front view, I should just see, if I select it, I should just see one set of... Uh, sorry. If I go to wireframe, I should just see one set of verts lying right on top of each other. And that's important because if you're quarter panels get off from each other, it's very obvious. The moment you hit render, you can see that that thing's off and it, it kind of blows your hole. So you select the side panel and you say duplicate? No, I first extrude the right. panel to get my shape right. Right. and then I select the faces that I want to duplicate and then I say um, edit mesh, duplicate face, make sure that separate faces is toggled because what that does is it creates a new object. And then what I do is I go into object mode, I select the old object that I just duplicated off of, and then I go into face mode to delete the faces that I just duplicated, and now I have a separate object. Okay. So let's go ahead and just check something out here. Uh, I want to check these verts to see if there's any shape variation uh, between this set and the one underneath and it looks like there could be so what I want to do now is I'm just going to leave that intact and I'm going to go into vertex mode and I'm going to hold down the V key for snap W for move V for snap to vertex and I want to move these verts down to this shape which I already know coincides with this shape and now I'm going to go ahead and combine these And then edit, uh, merge the verts. Okay, so 
So there we go. Well, now, so far, we have the uh, rear left quarter panel, the door, and we're starting to get the front front left quarter panel. Okay. So let's go ahead and go into vertex mode. And what we want to do here is we want to move these vertices so that they're correct in regard to the bumper or the running board. I don't know what you call that. The uh, yeah, wheel one. And then I'm just going to start moving these forward. Would you use the same modeling technique for a vehicle that has virtually no planar surface? Um, sports car. Yes. It would work the same. It would work the same because all you'd have to do is make the planar. You're going to start in one dimension, right? And you're going to make that shape. And then you're going to extrude, you're going to have all your verts, and you're going to kind of know how many verts you need to get the compound shape. And then you're going to go into the perspective view or another side, a view that's perpendicular to the view that you just built the plane in, and you're going to distort to get the other shape. Yeah. Yeah, the process is pretty much identical. Okay. So now uh, there is this section here where. The windshield kind of mounts to the car itself, and um, I don't know if it actually go welds into the car or if that's a separate piece. So let's just go ahead and check. It might be nice just to have a reference image. Let's see of where that actually the mounting takes place and now I see here that it looks like I am going to need some edges there uh, to, to create a notch out for that segment so I'm going to go ahead and leave that in there so I'm going to go into edge mode and the first or vertex mode and I'm going to straighten up these verts first of all by scaling them and then I'm going to select these edges here in here, and I'm going to say Edit Mesh Extrude in World Mode. Move those forward. And it could very well be, I think that in the actual vehicle, the wheel well in the front is actually slightly higher than the wheel well in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and, I don't think that's a mistake, so I'm going to go ahead and honor that. And I'll just straighten that one up. The other cool thing about doing the cars in this way is that your edge loops don't have to flow completely from panel to panel. Um, you can actually have uh, one panel with a different set of parameterization. Uh, I just try to do it as a habit just because it's kind of clean modeling. Um, but it's not, um, it's not necessary. So I'm going to go in here and go to vertex mode. I'm going to flatten out these verts here. And go into edge mode. That looks pretty good. Vertex. Rounding that corner edge. One more extrusion. Vertex. Oops. Is this solving anyone's problems from previous assignments? Mm -hmm.
Yeah, cars are really good exercise. So why don't we come out there? Vertex, I can go ahead and drop this now. And that's awesome because it coincides right with that same band that I had on the other side. And how does he want to handle this? I'll go ahead and save. I definitely want to extrude this. Yeah. Match it up, extrude it, match it up. Okay, I'm going to go into vertex mode and I'm going to edit mesh merge. I have a few here that didn't do it, so I'm going to go to, just going to select those and say uh, merge to center. There we go. And I'm going to grab these guys. And I'm going to extrude again. Vertex. Looks like this thing kind of does a little bit of a jaunt like it did on the back. as well as this kind of bevel here. Okay. And I think it's time for me to go ahead and look at the front view and see what this does. And then all I have to do, I was looking at my back view there. I only want to see the front, so all I have to do is just cinch that plane up so that it blocks the back. And there we go. So I can see here it turns a corner and goes down. So I could do that with the compound shape, but I'm going to choose not to. I could bevel all those simultaneously. I'm just going to do the easy bevel, and then I'm going to add the other one later. So I'm going to select these edges here. And I'm going to say Edit Mesh Extrude, World Mode. And I think I want two here. Okay. And I'm going to do it again. Okay. Let's see how we did. All right. We got our compound shape. Now all I got to do is extrude some edges here to finish this thing off. So I'm going to say edge.
and then extrude world mode and I'm just going to pull verts this time just want to get these to a point where I can actually see all the verts there we go Okay, that's, uh, that's look, not looking too bad. Cool. So we have um, front left quarter panel, the door, and the rear uh, left quarter panel. And at this point, we uh, can go ahead and start uh, modeling. Uh, the rest of the vehicle. So why not go ahead and start with uh, the windshield. How much time do I have? Is it more valuable for you guys to see the rest of the body built or to, or to see the rim? Rim. Do the rim. Rim. Okay. I had a bit of trouble with the windshield. Okay. The body's more of the same. I do want to show you. Okay, so are you guys comfortable with this? Because I'll show you how to do the fillets, and then I want to show you how to model the rim, which is probably going to take about 30, 40 minutes. And the windows are the same open? No, the windows are going to build the same way you're doing this. Okay. So the way this works is there's the, everything's a separate piece. So the window's a separate piece. It goes down into the door. There's usually a jam. There's some sort of rubber grommet that the window rolls up into. So everything that is a separate piece on the car gets modeled as a separate piece. So the rubber goes with the window though? Yeah, because once you finish the window, all you're going to have to do is create a path and make a rubber shape, make the grommet. You can have the window so it actually goes down into the door. You basically, you're going to model the thing as if it's the real thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, I do want to show you the fillets, all right? So um, the way the fillets work is this. What I would do is I've kind of been uh, pretty good about maintaining my gaps here. They're all pretty uniform. And you should do the same. The gaps on vehicles are actually a little different. So if you look at the front image, uh, you can see that the gap on uh, this section is much tighter than the gaps on the doors and whatnot. It's, they're called tolerances. Um, if you want to be completely meticulous, that's the way to do it. But if you want to cheat it a bit, you can kind of just use one gap for everything. And uh, the police will rarely catch you. So, you know, we are on a time frame. So uh, let's just go ahead and do that. What I like to do is I create um, like a bunch of fillet curves off to the side somewhere or below. And so uh, I'll just go ahead and make one. Uh, I'll go ahead and do it in here so I have a scale reference. So I'm just going to go in here and I want to fill a curve that for both sides of this door that basically is going to allow me to generate that same gap that you see there. So I'm going to go to CV curve tool. I'm going to hold down the C key to snap the curve. And then I'm going to go into the top view. And I want to create a fillet that's about half or relatively half of that gap, all right? You definitely, you don't want them to merge into each other. That will look weird. So you kind of just want them to um, come together, uh, but still just leave a, a small space. And you can work it out. Usually, if you maintain your gaps the same throughout the model, uh, this is pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead. I got my fillet curve there. I can 
rotate it. And then now all I need to do is I could select all these edges here. And say modify, convert uh, polygon edges to curve. And make sure that you, uh, you kind of always want to use linear for this. I'm going to say linear. So then, bam, right off of that poly object, I got my uh, path curve. So all I have to do is select my fillet curve and my path. And then I say uh, surfaces. Uh, extrude tube at path component profile normal and then I am loving polygons and control points if you'll notice I'm only using degree one curves and I'm always using control points and the reason for that is that it's gonna have the exact same number of edges as control verts as I use and I know to define that arc all I need is three edges alright so it's the minimum number of edges I need so this thing once games get faster and faster this model could conceivably go into a video game so that's always how I'm trying to construct things is so that they'll uh, the minimum number of, el of uh, edges you need to define the surface so I, I guess technically it's four edges but uh, it looks good that's the, that's the gist alright so now we have that um, fill it. Let's just go ahead and render that to prove the concept. There we go. Nice production fillet like you'd see on a vehicle. And now all I have to do is mirror that to the other side. So again, I select the edge. Let's see if I'll shift select it and get them to go. No, nah, it's going to go over the place. So I just have to select them individually. That probably means I'm, I don't have, uh, I've got a couple verts that aren't welded. Your top edge I'm, uh, for time's sake, I'm going to leave it alone. And then this one probably goes all the way around. All right, so here's where we're going to have a problem now. So this is a good exercise. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this through the modify, convert edges, uh, polygon edges to curve. And I don't believe this one's going to work because um, it is not, it's going to begin and end at a corner and therefore it's not going to run correctly. So I'm just going to duplicate this fillet. I'm going to move it over, hold down my C for snap to curve. Rotate it around. And I just want to illustrate that this isn't going to work and then show you how to fix it. So there's my fillet curve, and I'm going to say surfaces extrude. And is it going to make a liar out of me? Sometimes when you duplicate the curve, see how it's backwards? All you got to do is flip it around. Okay? And I'll laugh if this worked because that's never worked until I say it's not going to work and then it works. Uh, it worked. No, <laughs> <laughs> All right, now here's the cool part about this NURBS curves and construction history and doing the fillets in this way. Let's say that I've done this, right, but I left too big of a gap, right, uh, which I did. Okay. What It's so easy to fix because all I have to do is select... my fillet curves, which I'm going to do. Sometimes I just go into wireframe mode. And scale these babies up. Oh, and one of them exploded into oblivion. So i got to do them one at a time. And there you go. So uh, now I have the fillet curves. Um, and you can play around with it until you get a, a width that you like. And then that's it. You, after that, you're just going to have to duplicate that curve again, and you're just going to keep reusing it. So this goes a lot faster after you've done a few of them. 
And uh, the results are, again, absolutely what you want for a photoreal model. That looks awesome. And you're ready to go. All right, so let's save this. And let's go ahead and continue on to the rim. All these files I'm saving in the ref folder also. So if you guys want to go in there and refresh your memory, um, go for it. So let's do the rim. All right, so I also created a rim reference. And I'm going to go ahead and hide my geometry that I just created to get it out of the way on all the curves. And I'm going to go ahead and create another polygon plane. And I'm just going to center it up on this rim here. Okay. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say assign new material. Lambert file. I may have to expedite this thing. I'll do a poor man's version. I'm going to do this rim again in detail next week. So uh, this will be the poor man's version. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, grab our reference for the, the rim. So what happened here was I had an image. Um, rims are incredibly uh, difficult because there's so much uh, distortion with the camera that it's really hard to, uh, to find out what's what. So you kind of have to just pick uh, one view of the image and run with it. So let me explain that a little better. All right, so what I did was I analyzed this rim, and I noticed that there were one, two, three, four, five feature points. Now, when it comes to things that are manufactured, you can guarantee almost always that there's no asymmetry to the object itself because asymmetry is expensive and they're trying to make money off of this thing. All right, so now we know that we have five of these features, then all I have to do is go to my calculator and I don't even wanna do it because I can't find it on this thing. Uh, I go to my calculator and I divide by five and it's 72 degrees, okay? So what I'm gonna do is Take my little plane here, and I'm going to just move it out to be where it goes. And then I wonder why I can still see that. I thought I hit it. OK. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to, I think I want to move this to the origin which is what I would normally do. Or, no, I don't need to use the origin. I'm just going to center this thing up. And then I'm going to create a, uh, a CV curve. And I'm going to make it completely straight. I'm going to center its pivot and move it into place right in front of my little reference. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the insert key because what I want to do with this line is I want to make its center the base of the line itself. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that line and I'm going to rotate it. Uh, 72 divided by uh, 2 is what, um, 36? Yeah. So I'm going to go 36. I'm going to duplicate this one. And I'm going to go negative 36. Okay. And does anyone have a clue what I'm trying to do here? Yeah, I'm lining this thing up because I'm only going to model one-fifth. 
because this is a very complicated shape and if I only model a fifth of it I can go way into detail and model it a lot better if I, than if I try to model all of these simultaneously alright so all I did was I grabbed my little ref plane here and I cheated it over because uh, it, it's got so much perspective on it that uh, I'm just lining it up more or less as a guide okay so what I want to do now is uh, I have my rim here I want to kind of just break the rim up into depth elements. So what I have here is this is the extreme of kind of the aluminum rim. So I'm going to go ahead and create a nerves primitive circle. There we go. And I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to hold down my C key for snapping. And I'm going to snap it right to my little guide curve there. And that represents the exterior portion of the rim. Move that back because now we're adding depth to our little scene here. And then I want to. Oh, I made that way too big, so I'm going to scale that down. M remember, that's centered on those guide curves. So everything is based off of these guide curves. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate that again. And I want to just kind of identify that position right there on the rim, which is where that thing turns a corner and starts skirting inward. And then I'm going to duplicate again, and that represents another bevel on the rim. And then again, and that represents the interior of the rim. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate another one, and this represents this little transition right here. I'm going to duplicate another one that represents that transition, and I'm going to duplicate another one, and that represents this little hub here. And then if I duplicate another one, that represents the interior of that hub. Okay. And again, notice my picture is all off. That's fine because I was just using that for more or less uh, a, uh, a guide for how to make my shapes here. All right, so now that I have all my elements, let's go ahead and start assigning some depth to them. So this one is the most exterior. This one... Uh, we can just go ahead and guesstimate how far we want to put that back. So let's just say, I don't know, something like that. That's maybe way too extreme. This one. A little bit more in than the other one. Is everyone following me? Okay. So that probably gets recessed quite a bit. And then this one, uh, that's the very interior of the rim. So let's just say that that's halfway between the, the interior and the rest of the, the curve. We really don't know, and at this point we just gotta we got to make it up. So that's pretty good. That's for that little hub interior and then this one is for um, the hub nut which is basically parallel to the other and then this one is for the nut itself and I think that's a little bit recessed in from the boundary of the rim or the extent of the rim. Alright let's go ahead and save this Every rim I've ever made, I've done this way, and it turns out awesome. Okay. So. okay, so we have all our stuff. Now let's go ahead and let's start with this little hub nut, and we're going to work our way from the front of the rim to the back of the rim. Okay, so let's go ahead and create uh, a polygon primitive. 
and I'm going to do a uh, cylinder and it would be help helpful if I could see what I was doing because I just botched that one up there we go okay uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and move this guy forward. I'm going to move it center to be just the center of the, the verts here. And then I want this thing to line up with that hub nut that I said is the hub nut. So there we go. And then I'm not sure what curve that's right. Okay, so it's in the right position now. And what I want to do is I want to go to the channel box. And I want to change the subdivisions to 6, which is what that thing actually is. 6 sided. Okay. And that looks good. So um, if you'll notice, though, if you look at this little nut, See that? The whole thing on this vehicle is it's all these little fillets that are in the middle. It's angular, but then they fill it, that little angular arc. And I wooded it on and on the car when I was building it, except for it would have gotten too tedious uh, for now. If I was doing it at home, I could do it. I just couldn't do it in front of you guys. You'd fall asleep on me. All right, so I just want to show you how that kind of works uh, on something simpler. And let's go ahead and go to Faces. Oops, and d delete all the wrong one. That's what I want you to do. And I'm going to delete the front and back faces. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in to edge mode. Uh, before I do something like this, I always like to delete the history just in case there's some nonsense on there. So I delete the history and I go edge. And then I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, and I'm going to use the Bevel tool. And oh my god, it turned it into a circle. What the hell? That's not what I wanted. So I want to just, I'm going to play with the offset here. So I'm totally eyeballing this. You could, you know, if you had a caliper, you could totally measure this on the actual vehicle. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. And then I want to change the number of segments. Oh, wrong, wrong value. Uh, let's see here. Offset. There we go. That looks good. Now I want to change the number of segments to be three. And then this annoying tool always adds these little faces here. Uh, I don't want those, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those. I just wish it wouldn't do it. I know that every single one of you guys has wanted to make a compound object like this before. So it's tedious, but when it's done, you are so cool, man. Okay, so I deleted all those little annoying faces. And what I want to do now is I want to, I have a couple of things going on here. First of all, this whole nut looks like it was cut out of like billet aluminum. So that's all one piece. So we have here is we have this nut with the rounded edges. We have an inset that's circular, and it's also bevel, it looks like. And then the whole thing uh, goes into another circular section, all right? Good. I may only finish the nut and the hub behind it for today, but I think this is good, good stuff. I think you guys probably haven't seen anything like this. Okay, so we have... Uh, edge and I'm going to go ahead and select the edge loop and now what I want to do is I want to count the number of edges so see that number right there 18 okay um, is that right 18 edges yeah that's right uh, 18 edges and so what I need is I need a circle that uh, is divisible um, by 18 let's see here 
Where's the calculator on this board? Uh, I have mine right on our. Alright. So 18 divided by 6 is 3. Why is this working now? That's what it is. Aha. So I would normally want to do a circle that's 32 uh, segments. But what happens is I divide 32 by 6 and it's not an even number. So I need a circle that has is divisible by 6 evenly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try 36, which I know is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a circle Yeah, I want to do a, a polycylinder. Sorry, I did this first this morning. Uh, create a polygon primitives cylinder. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. It also helps if you do this uh, at the origin. See how I'm constantly having to. And I'm going to move the pivot of this thing. To be centered on my actual. And I just am going to make this thing flush. And then I want to check my scale in, and I think I honestly think both of these are off. So I probably did not snap this to my guide curve when I made it, which I should have. There we go. And now I'm going to do this one the same. Okay. Now I know that those guys are planar and that it's in the right space. And after I'm done building it, I'll just move it back. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this down. I don't like that original one I made. It seems too big now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, that's my inset for that nut. I'm going to go into face mode. Before I do that, I want to make sure that this thing has 36 sides. It does not. Okay. What did I do wrong? 18. I think I combined two different math problems. From earlier, uh, this thing only has 18 edges, so that's all I need. Is that right? Yeah. So I'm gonna do 18. Mm -hmm. So I just want to cut cut the front faces off of this thing. And then I'm going to fill it. First, I'm going to select these faces and I'm going to just scale them down to kind of help cre create that effect. It goes in? I thought it went out. No, if you look at it, it kind of recesses a little bit on the inside. Okay, so I've got uh, this guy and I've got this guy. 
And all I need to do is first check their normals. So I'm going to say display polygons, uh, face normals. I want to create a button because I'm going to do this quite a bit. So for all you guys who are wondering what happened, you know, I turn on the face normals, how do I turn them off? You just click it again. It's just a toggle. So the face normals on this one are inverted. So all I have to do is select that object. And I'm going to say polygons, normals, reverse. Okay, now they're all oriented the same direction. I can go ahead and bridge this baby. So first I need to select them both. I'm going to turn off normals. I'm going to say mesh combine. And now I can select this edge loop and this edge loop. And I can go to edit mesh, bridge, make sure my divisions are set to zero. I say apply. It gives me that wacky setup. All I have to do is change the bridge offset and they line up perfectly. And there we have is the nut with the inset. And now if I wanted to be super lazy, uh, all I have to do is uh, select those edges. And then I want to select the interior edges also. And this may not give me the best result in the world, actually. I have a longer, <laughs> I've got a longer winded version of this. So let's just pray for a second. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh. And I'm going to go to Bevel. And let's hope that I get a decent result. Yeah, it looks all right. Okay, let's do that one. Segments. Two. I always do three segments whenever you're adding a round to anything. Okay, offset. That looks pretty good. Segments. That's good. See how those faces all of a sudden are uh, basically not shaded anymore? Uh, don't panic. All that is is that those new polygons that have been created have lost their UV coordinates. And then the, the program freaks out and it just makes them invisible. So all you have to do is go to object mode, right click on it, and say assign existing material, Lambert Warren. Yeah. They it uses it, they lose their temporary lose their UV coordinates. I was having trouble with that. So there we go. We've got our nut with the little inset. Let's go ahead and keep going. We've got this little segment here behind. So um, I don't know why. I think I I mixed that before when I said I needed uh, 36. That that's something else that comes later. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, it's 18. So you always just count the number of edges on your object. And that's the circle you need to match. So let's go ahead and I'm going to create another cylinder. This one is the big boy behind here. So it's kind of thin though. So let's go ahead and make that. Uh, anytime I do this, I always just, I get in the habit whether I need this or not uh, to center the the pivot at the convergence of the vertices. And then uh, in this case, I do need it because I'm going to snap it to my origin guide curves. And then I'm going to move it back. Okay. And so uh, this time I've got this little nut here. And uh, these prototypers for cars, they love to make things out of billet now um, because they probably have tons of CNC machines going nonstop. So there we go. I'm going to line it up. All I have to do is again delete all the faces.
and then this one has its faces deleted. So I'm going to go to uh, first. I want to check the normal, so I'm going to select both objects and say show face normals. They're both the same, so I'm good. I go to edit mesh or mesh combine, and then all I have to do is do the exact same thing I did last time. Select edge, shift click the next one. Select edge, shift click the next one. And then I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, Bridge. Ah, oh, what happened? Equal numbers. Is this where? I did not, did I? Uh, Amanda's right. I, I don't think I checked my. So check the back of the other one. I blew it. 20. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do uh, um, mesh detach because that's what I wanted to do. Our separate. I wanted to show you how that worked. Let's go ahead and do that again. Create polygon primitives. Cylinder. Don't worry, next week this is all we're doing is detailed parts. So. so you want the body part already? Yeah, I want you to have all your bodies mocked up and fill it up. So, yeah. If you get there, that's, I mean, you're home free. Um, is this where we just do half the car? Yes, you only do half the car. Check segments. What's that? Check the segments. Yeah, well, until I don't. <laughs> Snap into. So then we'd have a lot more work if uh, both sides of our car are different. Right? Yeah, that's why you don't. Yours isn't, is it? I actually might have different compartments on the side. Wow. I'd say you skip the. What am I? Why is this snapping to. Am I not doing curve? There we go. I'm going to line it up. Thanks, Donovan. Segments. 18. Scale it up. Off again, not to fret. There we go. And now I want to bevel the entire thing. So edit mesh, bevel. Decent. Oh. That was unintended. Again, I have a more long winded version of this that is not using Bell. You have to merge those, um, that ring. What ring? The one that you just made there to the other knot part of it, part of the base ring. Okay. Do the two pieces connect? 
uh, there they are. I just uh, bridged them. Yeah, yeah I want to bubble that. I just left off the other side for now. There we go. High quality modeling takes time. Okay. Looks good. Uh, I've got that polygon problem where the UVs are gone. So I'm going to assign an existing material, Lambert. And then the beauty of this uh, modeling style also is I have all these uh, compound uh, bevels. Um, and they work perfectly for polygon smooth. So that's the other thing I'm trying to teach you guys is that everything you build should be able to smooth because that's how it's done in the industry. So when you're building an asset, you don't want to think of how does it look good at level one, which is the low poly cage. You always want to think, I'm building this in a way that when I add a poly smooth to it, it's going to render the same no matter whose hands I get it in. Because it gets downstream to the rendering department, and they're going to subdivide this thing a couple thousand times. Um, not for games, but in film leader. Well, whatever. They're going to... They go high. Some of the output geometry in film is like millions of polygons. Um, ZBrush is like five to seven times something like that. But anywhere beyond that, it's just ridiculous. All right, so I'm going to try this again. This time I'm going to delete the history. I think it just might have had something to do with uh, the fact that I had so many bevels on there. Let's see if I can get this to work now. Yeah, that's what it was. And if I was really being a pro, I would have actually also been mindful of what my uh, bevel settings were so that I could uh, do them the same every time. There we go. Okay. Time is it? Oh, we're out of time. Uh, I thought I wasn't going to get through all that. Okay, so again, to prove my concept, this is an awesome uh, uh, machine part with all the correct fillets and bevels, complex objects. Um, and it's going to look absolutely perfect in a render. I can confirm that by going ahead. Uh, the, remember, the, the smooth in the viewport is a sub-D smooth, which is completely different from a polygon smooth. To illustrate that, I'm going to select this object, and I'm going to say mesh smooth. This time, that's a poly smooth that I'm going to put on it. And I just want to dial up the subdivisions here to show. that no matter how dense I go with that, it's still going to produce a perfectly renderable object. And next week we're going to build the entire rim to that level. Uh, and it's going to look great. Okay. So let's let's see if cam stage or crashed. It did not. So, and you guys have a video of the lecture. Awesome. Great.